welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name's Kate and every Friday I bring you a book review. So today we're going to be talking about the second book in the Ethics Witch Museum series, which is Strange Sight by Sid Moore. And um, before we go any further, let's just take a minute for this cover. How cool is that? Like, you don't realise it, but these are all little clues as to what's going on in the story. Not so much the skull, but I do quite like the skull. I just love the look of these books. Like, I would have ever come across them if my friend hadn't sent me the first one. Yeah. And yeah, I really enjoyed Strange Sight. I thought it was much better than Strange Magic. I was much more gripped the whole way through. And I don't know if that's because personally I quite like a ghost story. Like, um, 2019, when I had some time off over Christmas, me and my friends did a ghost tour. And when I was reading this, I did have to text my friend that I went with. And I was like, because one of the ones I went with was the one that sent me the first book. And I was like, did we stop somewhere? Well, um, because there's a specific ghost that's mentioned in this. I'm just trying to see if it mentions her on the back. Uh, no, it doesn't, so I won't mention her name. But I'm sure we stopped outside somewhere where the story was of the ghost was very similar. When the ghost was alive, <laughs> this is a really strange thing, when the ghost was alive, what that ghost person did, woman did, I don't know, you, 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 you get me. Yeah, so when, and yeah, I'm pretty sure we had that story because I just, it just rang, it just rang a real bell with me, um, but my friend wasn't sure, but yeah, I think we did. Uh, so that was familiar to me, possibly the story anyway, so maybe that's why I enjoyed it more. But I think this book is, it kind of goes into things in a bit more detail than the first book does. I wonder if it's maybe because in this book I enjoyed it a bit more because we're starting to get to know Rosie a little bit more, getting to know Sam a bit more, the history behind the museum, getting to know the Strange family a bit more, and Rosie you know, relationship with her family, because in the first book it kind of makes out that they aren't that close, but whereas in the second book it kind of, you get the feeling that they are closer than she initially made out, and the reasons why she wasn't particularly close with her grandfather who left her the museum becoming much more obvious, and some of the mysteries surrounding the strange family are kind of coming out, we're learning more about it. Which is just really interesting. And I like that we're learning more about Rosie. And Rosie as a character is developing. Like she's developing more nuances and stuff. Because in the first book she's very much she's very, very sceptical about things. And I said in that video that I quite liked that it was from her point of view and that she's kind of sceptical because I'm very open minded about these things. I believe in everything. So I do quite like that she's still quite sceptical, but she's developing kind of nuances, developing nuances around things, which is really interesting to kind of see her mindset changing and her relationship with Sam build as well. And they go to this restaurant in the city of London called Le Fleur, where bonnet clad apparitions are passing through walls. Blood leaks from the ceilings and rats besiege dining rooms. But before the Essex Witch Museum investigative team of Rosie Strange and Sam Stone can look into these strange sights, events turn darker. For Lafleur's chef has been strung up in Meg or Risley End, and the only witness, the owner's daughter Mary, swears blind. A ghost is to blame. I mean, to me, if I saw this on the bookshelf and picked up the picked it up, I'd be like, yes, straight away. Because I do love ghost stories. And it's really interesting the end of the story. Like, was convinced the whole way through that this ghost had done it, basically. And obviously I don't think that ghosts can kill people. I mean, I don't think ghosts can, like, physically harm human beings. I mean, you could see a ghost and have a heart attack or something, or, you know, I don't know, fall down the, the stairs or something, or be so shocked. But I don't think ghosts can, like, physically murder someone. But even though they can't, 
or maybe don't exist. The whole way through I was completely convinced that the ghost did it and was a little bit disappointed with the ending because they rationalise it as you would and it doesn't turn out to be the ghost which I was a bit disappointed in. But having said that there's part of the kind of wrapping up of the story where Rosie's set everything up in a certain way and then something happens and it makes you wonder what's happening and it does kind of lead you towards the ghost angle again. So that's what's really good about this book is that we start to find out more about kind of Rosie's background and see her mindset changing a little bit more and her kind of aligning herself with the thoughts and understandings and ideas that her grandfather had who left her the museum and we're starting to kind of work out on kind of a subtext level why she might have been left the museum in the first place as opposed to her father or brother it's starting to slowly make sense why Rosie was the one who was left the museum out of everyone in the family which is really nice to see as well so we're definitely learning more about the characters in this and seeing the nuances shift between Rosie's understanding of what she can see in front of her but what also might be possible as well which is really interesting to see and I think that's quite important to kind of show that people are when their minds are kind of opening and they're developing nuances around stuff as well it's really interesting and it's nice to see that in a book that someone's not just kind of stuck down one line with things especially with things like this with like witches and ghosts and things like that it's quite nice to see someone who was kind of a staunch sceptic slowly developing some nuances and becoming more kind of open-minded to these things especially as we're starting to maybe discover that Rosie possibly had some gifts in this area not quite sure yet hasn't been clarified could have just been a mix-up or something that was already part of something that was pre-planned but there is something that happens in this book that well I definitely took it a certain way because obviously as I've said before I'm very open to the idea of ghosts and stuff um, and uh, but yeah overall I absolutely loved Strange Sight and I'd recommend it actually I reckon you could just read it as the first one maybe skip the original one Strange Magic because although it's a good book I much preferred this one I thought this one was a lot lot better I guess you could possibly skip Strange Magic and just start with Strange Sight but if you want to do them all in chronological order and start from the beginning then Strange Magic isn't a bad book at all I just thought this book was a lot better it was a lot better paced okay do you think so far from what I've read in my experience they do take a little while to get going like they start off quite slowly and then they do get going but they definitely take a little while to get going I think that's why it took me so long to read it's taken me actually a while to read both of them because I think they just take a while to get going and it kind of takes you a while to get into them but other than that they are both really good reads they're really gripping towards the end I mean last week like every spare moment I had I was literally reading this and then it ended on a cliffhanger which wasn't immediately picked up in the next one so I still don't know what happens I, I'm still hanging off that cliff waiting to find out what happened in that moment it was so like it was really freaky actually it almost reminded me of a Doctor Who episode um those of you that have read that the book let me know if you know what episode I'm talking about I think you should know but um yeah and it's just like a really kind of freaky cliffhanger it ended on I was literally hoping to open the first page of the next one and it literally pick off where the last page of this one ended up which it didn't which is very frustrating <laughs> but it's making me carry on reading so maybe that's why the author did it probably actually probably to entice you and keep you reading but I'm invested now so I do want to carry on reading I want to carry on and kind of see what Rosie and Sam get up to next 
and find out more about the Strange family. I'm really intrigued about the Strange family as well to find out more about them, about especially Rosie's grandmother and her aunt. Seem like they were definitely interesting characters that we haven't found out a lot about yet. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Thought it was better than the first one. More gripping, gets going quicker and, and keeps you gripped a bit better. And I really liked the ghost story that went with it as well. And it was a good highlighting kind of a London's history, I guess, um, which is interesting. These books are really kind of unearthing bits of British history that I didn't, or I guess English history so far, that I didn't necessarily know about before. Because I, as I said, I'm 50-50 as to whether I knew about the ghost who supposedly appears in this book or not. Could be thinking of someone entirely different. I have a feeling it's the same one, but actually I also have a feeling that I could be wrong. So who knows. But yeah, overall I absolutely love Strange Sight and I would really recommend it. I'd recommend it over the first one, as I said. And yeah, if you're reading these, do let me know. And yeah, as soon as I finish the next one be doing a review of that and I will see you next week with another book review.